Hi guys, in this video we're going to look at importing Stripe data into Airtable using the Data Fetcher app. So we're going to start by installing the Data Fetcher app from the Airtable app marketplace. Once we've done that, we need to sign up for a free Data Fetcher account. I've already got one, so I'm going to sign in. The next thing we need to do is go into Stripe and get our API key. So we're going to use this later on to authenticate our requests. So going into Stripe, you click on Developers on the left-hand side, then API keys, and then there's two different keys, a publishable one and a secret one. We want the secret key. So just make a note of this somewhere secure, because I've already done it here. Now going back into Airtable, we want to click create request in order to go to the create request screen. We're going to call our request list Stripe customers because we're going to be fetching a list of Stripe customers. Now we need to enter the URL. So looking at the Stripe API docs, we can find the list all customers endpoint. And we can copy this URL here, which is made up of a base URL and then an endpoint of customers. So copy that into the URL input in Data Fetcher. We now need to add a header. So we need to add an authorization header. So the name of the header is authorization. The value is Vera space. And then our API key that we just copied down. So paste that in. The next thing we need to do is set a limit parameter. So looking at the Stripe uh, docs, we can see that there's an optional limit parameter. So what this does is it controls how many customers we'll get back from Stripe. The default is 10, but we can get up to 100. So by setting this limit parameter to 100, we can basically reduce the number of API calls we need to make. And you can see that that automatically updates the URL. So let's just close the app and have a look at our table. So you can see that the table's got a name field, but we haven't got any other fields. But the Stripe API is going to give us a bunch of different fields. So what we need to do is run the request and then map those to our output table. Now there's one thing we need to do first, which is set the output table. So I'm going to use that Stripe customers one. You can also click this use current button on the right. So just use the active one. And then you can click that again to set the view. So now this run button is enabled and we can click it. We can toggle this to make sure we don't see this warning over and over again. We can click run again and we're going to get a bunch of different fields. Okay, so we've got object and then data.id. So looking at this again, we can see that there's an object and then this data has an ID field here. So that dot represents nesting. It represents that this ID is within an object that's in this data field. So let's click filter all just to get rid of everything and then start adding stuff back in. So scrolling down, we can see the data dot name. So let's use our existing name field for that that's in the table. Let's also keep data ID and say that we want to create a field for that called ID. And then scrolling down again, let's keep data email. Now data fetcher suggests the data type as a single line text, but we can actually override that and say this is an email. And then let's rename it to email. Okay, let's click confirm. Data fetcher is going to make two fields in the background and then run the request again and create the records. So closing the app, we can see that we've pulled in all of our Stripe data into a table. Now if we go back into the app and look in the advanced settings, we can see this update based on field. So what that means is, is there a field that we can use to uniquely identify a customer? Now the one Stripe gives us is ID. Now by setting this in data fetcher, 
we basically ensure that our Airtable records are kept in sync with our Stripe customers. So if there was a customer in Airtable that was actually then deleted in Stripe, it would delete it in Airtable too the next time you run the request. Or similarly, if there was another customer in Stripe that wasn't in Airtable, when you run the request, that's going to be created in Airtable. So looking further down, we can see this pagination option. So by default, uh, we're basically just going to make one request and pull in up to 100 customers. But if we exceeded that and we had, say, 200 customers, we're no longer going to get that second page, or we're not going to get that second page of customers. So pagination is basically a way of saying, pull in every page of customers. Looking at the Stripe docs, we can see there's a starting after parameter, an optional parameter that's used for pagination. What this basically means is that on each request, we need to set a parameter called starting after and then use an ID, so an object ID, um, to basically say where to start after, like where the cursor should be. Now, it sounds quite complicated. Luckily, with Data Fetcher, um, that complexity is handled for us. So all we need to do is set the pagination type to cursor, toggle fetch all pages to on, and then type the name of the parameter and the field we want to use, which is ID. So next time we run that request, it's going to make one, and then it's going to make another. Now on the second request, it's going to not get any data because we've only got 28 customers, which is obviously less than 100. So data fetcher is then going to know automatically to stop making requests. But if, it, if there was more data, if we had a few hundred customers, it's going to keep making those requests and pull in each page of data. So that's fully set up. So we can just click Save to save the request. And then we can click Back to go to the home screen. Now, the next thing we want to do is pull in Stripe subscriptions. So let's create a new table called Stripe Subscriptions. Let's delete these extra fields. And let's change the name of the primary one, primary field to ID rather than name. So whereas customers have names, subscriptions don't. So we're going to change that to ID. We're then going to create a linked record or a linked field to our customer table. because we, we know that each subscription is going to have a customer. So looking at the Stripe docs, we can scroll down and see subscriptions here. And we can click this and see that there's a list subscriptions endpoint. So it's very similar to our customers one, but with different fields that come back. So let's go back to Data Fetcher. Now, rather than setting everything up from scratch, we can click Duplicate and then update this, this copy of our customer endpoint, or our customer API request. So let's call that subscriptions, let's Stripe subscriptions. And we'll change that URL to subscriptions based on the Stripe docs. We'll keep the parameters and the headers exactly the same. And then we'll use our new table so that it's output into a different table when we run the request. Okay, so now let's click Run. And we're getting a bunch of different fields. Uh, so we're getting a warning because we can't keep 100 fields, but we don't want to do that anyway. So we're going to filter all of these out, and then we're going to add some back in, in the same way we did for customers. So first, let's keep ID and map it to the ID field that we made as the primary field. And then let's also keep uh, created. So this is like a timestamp for when the subscription was created. So you can see that might be useful. Um, so rather than use an existing table field, we're going to say create a new one and create one called created. Um, next, let's keep customer. So we said each subscription is going to have a customer. Um, and rather than creating a new field, we want to use that customer field that we've created, the linked one. So in order to use that, we need to set the data type as link and pick that field, the customer field, and then leave everything else as it is. And further down, we can see some other fields that we might want to pull in. 
Um, and if you're not sure what any of these mean, you can kind of look at the API docs and try and map between them. So there's one here called interval. Now I've already had a look and I've seen that that means essentially what interval or what period is this subscription made over. So some subscriptions are monthly, some are annual. Um, so we can basically keep that field. We'll create a new one in our table, a new field in our table called interval. Cool. Another field we want to keep is this one called uh, unit amount. So looking again at the docs, we can see there's a unit amount here, which is a numerical value. And it's the amount of the subscription, the cost of it in, in cents. So let's keep that and let's call it unit amount cents, or maybe just amount is a bit simpler. And then we'll click confirm. It's going to create those fields and then run the request. Populate the fields and delete the default ones that were created by Airtable. So we'll click save again, save this request. Now we can see that we've got subscriptions by ID, we've got links automatically created to the Stripe customers, we've got a created timestamp, an interval, an amount that subscription costs. So this created timestamp is a date, but it's a Unix timestamp. So we need to basically convert that into a date field. So we'll create another one called created date, another field called created date, and we're going to use a formula to convert that timestamp into a date. So we're going to use created. Um, so I'll put this in the tutorial, but basically you can just copy this in and this will convert that into a timestamp. And we can see in the formatting that it does indeed do that. Cool. So now we can hide the original created one, but we want to keep it there so that it's actually updated when the request is run. Now we can use another formula to calculate the monthly amount. So we've got here the amount. But for annual plans, this is going to be the annual cost. And for monthly ones, this is going to be the monthly cost of the subscriptions. So let's create a new for a new field called monthly amount. That's a formula field. And we're going to use a currency formatting. Okay, so let's hide amount in cents because you don't really need that anymore. And now we can see that we've got this monthly amount for each subscription. And look at the bottom here, we could see our monthly recurring revenue. We could do other kind of analysis on this um, on this thing. So we could look at um, the average revenue per customer, 47. Cool, so that's subscriptions and customers done. Um, because we duplicated that existing request, we can just double check in the advanced settings and see pagination is set up and the update based on field is set up. So let's save that. We'll click back. And the last thing we want to do is pull in Stripe invoices. So let's again duplicate Stripe customers. We'll update the name to invoices. We'll have a look for invoices in the Stripe docs. Okay, so we can see these all follow a pattern um, and we can change the endpoint to invoices. Keep everything else the same. We want to create a new table again called Stripe invoices. We'll delete these extra fields. Now an invoice is going to have a, both a customer and a subscription. So we can create those linked fields in the same way we did between customer and subscription. So 
Okay. We'll also change this initial one to ID rather than name. Okay, so let's set up our request in data fetcher. So we're going to say use Stripe invoices to output, use grid view, and then determine fields. So now we're going to see all these fields come into data fetcher. And there's a lot of fields, so we're going to filter all again. We're going to keep ID and map it to ID. We're going to keep customer and use our customer field we just created. But first we need to set the data type as link. We're going to use the search to have a look for subscription. Set the data type as link again and set it to link. And some other fields we can keep are Paid. So this is a checkbox or a boolean value, basically saying whether the invoice has been paid or not. So we're going to create a new checkbox field called paid. We're going to do the same thing that we did on subscriptions for created to get a timestamp for the invoice. And then finally, we're going to look at this hosted invoice URL field. So this is a, a Stripe um, page where they actually you know, provide a URL where you can look at the invoice. And we're going to set this data type as URL and create a new field called URL. So now click and confirm. I'm going to make those new fields. And then run the request. Click save. And we can see we've pulled in Stripe invoices. We've got customers, subscriptions. We've got the URLs pulled into a URL field if we want to have a look. So if we just open up one of these, we can see the invoice. Great. We've got a paid value as to whether it was paid or not. And then we've got this created timestamp. So let's just do the same um, formula that we use for subscriptions. create a created date field. Hide the created one because we don't need to see that anymore. And then just close this app sidebar so that we can see all our data has been pulled in here. So that's it. So we've pulled in Stripe customers, Stripe subscriptions and invoices into data fetcher. Um, there's a bunch of other endpoints um, and data fields that we can pull in from Stripe, so I'll be making lots more videos on those endpoints soon.